There should be little resistance offered when stating, the Blancpain 50 Fathoms is one of the most legendary dive watch families of all time. In the decades since the introduction of the 50 Fathoms and the Bathyscaphe, the these once utilitarian model families have evolved, uh, just ascending into more of a luxurious position. In the modern market, the question of many buyers out there might just be simply, what are you exactly getting for the money and why should I look here instead of other places in the industry that perhaps garner up more hype? In this video, we'll look and do a deep dive on these two models, compare them with one another, and then help provide context to their legendary reputations. Let's jump into it. Now, before we jump into this video, a big part of appreciating these watches properly is understanding the backstory of these watches. I'm not gonna be able to get into all the details here with why these watches were created, how they were created, who was responsible for creating them, how they perhaps really were the first commercially available dive watch when you look at the original 50 Fathoms back in 1953 with prototypes beginning before that. I'll have a detailed article really going into all the nitty gritty of this and then also looking at the contemporary positioning and some other models outside of the ones that we're going to be looking at here today. Check it out now in the description down below, teddybaltasar.com. Now, just to set the stage for our video here, let's begin again with the origins of the 50 Fathoms, just an abbreviated version. In 1950, Jean-Jacques Fichter became the CEO of Blancpain. As legend has it, Fichter, who was a also passionate scuba diver, was driven to create the 50 Fathoms after running out of air on a dive in the south of France, making clear the need for an accurate and dependable means of telling time underwater. After a series of tests, prototypes, and patents for a unique lock ring operated case back and novel crown design, the 50 Fathoms was introduced in 1953, establishing a basic dive watch design format with a rotating bezel that influences virtually every dive watch design that followed. Quickly developing an impressive reputation for durability and reliability, Blancpain collaborated with divers from the French Navy, Marine Nationale, and later the US Navy in producing special 50 Fathoms variants to suit combat diving use cases. Over the years, the 50 Fathoms of course evolved, but in most cases, the basic design formula remained much of the same, surviving to this day with a variety of improvements, aesthetic updates, and a much larger case profile, but a similar silhouette and dial format. While the 50 Fathoms, which was too large for everyday wear in the 1950s in many instances, as it was created for pure underwater utility as a piece that was needed as diving equipment, the Bathyscaphe was originally designed for men and women who wanted a more affordable affordable, less serious diving design that could be comfortably worn every day while still being more than capable of being taken diving. Named after deep diving research vessels, the Bathyscaphe launched in the late 1950s, first as an automatic like the 50 Fathoms and later as an additional hand winding version. Along with virtually the entire Swiss watchmaking industry, Blancpain was imperiled by the events of the quartz crisis with both the 50 Fathoms and its sibling, the Bathyscaphe, lying dormant for decades. The core principles behind each collection has remained much as they were in the 1950s, with the 50 Fathoms serving as the larger, more expensive professional diving watch, and the Bathyscaphe coming in a smaller case and a more attainable position in terms of price. However, Blancpain, which is now housed underneath the Swatch Group umbrella, certainly has changed over the decades, which is a part of why I wanted to take a look at these two watches. Today, Today we have the most basic references from each of the now broad collection on hand with a 45 millimeter stainless steel 50 fathoms and a 38 millimeter steel bathyscaphe. So to start out reviewing these pieces, it feels the most appropriate to begin with the 50 Fathoms, given its initial point of introduction. It comes in with a 45 millimeter diameter and a 51 millimeter lug to lug length with a 15.5 millimeter thickness. While the wearing experience is simply huge, the slightly shortened lug to lug length compared to the width helps this one wear closer to a 44 millimeter watch in my opinion. Case architecture follows the basic shape of the original watch, but with a much more refined presentation and high polish and featuring organically rounded case Case lengths, sloping lugs with a bit of a scroll motif on their underside, and sculpted crown guards, differing from the original 50 Fathoms models, but adding protection for the 8mm sign screw down crown. 
Paired with the solid stainless steel screw down case back, the modern 50 Fathoms is rated for 300 meters of water resistance. And on the opposing side of the case from the crown, Blanc Pond signature prominently engraved into the sloping case flank, perhaps a polarizing aspect for some, but hard to see when on the wrist. Resting atop the case is a proportionally large 120 click rotating elapsed time bezel. Here equipped with a loomed insert with an intriguing dome sapphire cap that adds to its durability while allowing some vintage Bakelite bezel vibes to form. Now the curvature to the sapphire insert certainly exudes attention to detail given the tight window of acceptability in order to actually manufacture this. And this attention to detail is further felt with the bezel action that is nothing short of excellent, offering precise audible click with no back play. Nothing short of what you might expect from a brand that was the one that pioneered the unidirectional bezel. Set between wide odd number 23 millimeter lugs, the 50 Fathoms leans into a Kevlar top rubber line strap that evokes the simpler rubber straps from decades past and tapers to a standard 20 millimeters at a milled and signed pin buckle. Now, despite there also being available options on a bracelet, to me, given the military use case, the 50 Fathom feels more at home when you pair it with a different traditional strap like this or with a nylon or NATO. Taking up a view of the watch's anterior surface, we have a dome sapphire crystal keeping watch over a dial that evokes the feel of the elder 50 Fathoms, yet with necessary touches of modern. Now the backdrop of the dial is a glossy black central surface with a hint of sunray effect. Applied triangular and Arabic indices are located just within a printed minute track in white with some multi-dimensionality between the various sections of the dial. The handset is a stylized baton style with a sweep seconds hand offering an arrow tip executed in eye-catching red. Dial text is minimal with only the brand signature at noon and 50 fathoms and the depth rating at six. At 4.30, a date window reveals a white on black date disc that will probably be a love it or hate it type of feature given its positioning. The loom within the markers, hands, and within the bezel is among the best I've ever come across, shining with impressive incandescence while maintaining its glow with solid consistency rather than the rapid roll off of some divers on the market. As you would expect and quite frankly deserve for almost $15,000, the modern 50 Fathoms houses a well done manufactured caliber with the 1315, which in this variation is covered by a stainless steel dome case back. At a broad 30.6 millimeter in diameter compared to the 25 5.6 millimeter for something like an ETA 2824. The 1315 is Blancpain's choice for larger watches, also offering a silicon balance spring and a pleasing level of decoration. Perhaps most impressively though, and by way of the unconventional three mainspring barrels, the 1315 provides five days or 120 hours of power reserve, which is about as much as you can reasonably expect from an automatic sports watch operating at four hertz. In terms of its accuracy, these movements are tested at six different positions as will be marked on the movement. Note that C OSC only tests at five positions. That said, we didn't want to fully take their word for it, so we did decide to test these as well, at least as a specific example across five different positions. It was keeping time between plus two to plus four seconds across those five positions. Just to unpack, you're looking at this movement, 28,800 vibrations per hour, four hertz. It does feature hacking and hand winding, hacking stop in the second hand when you pull the crown to the farthest position, and again, a power reserve of 120 hours. Now moving over to the bathyscaph, we have an entirely different approach when it comes to wearability, especially with a 38 millimeter case diameter, 44.6 millimeter lug to lug, and a 10.5 millimeter thickness. This reduced set of dimensions is keeping with the watch's overall positioning as the smaller and more commercially viable 50 fathoms intended for those that just want a watch that has dive watch capability instead of being a tool used for day-to-day -day life underwater. On the wrist, the bathyscaph wears even smaller than its proposed measurement, presenting a case that feels like a 37 millimeter in many respects as a result of that external rotating bezel taking real estate from the centrally located dial. In contrast, the bathyscaph also offers more subtle case architecture and is more muted in its color with angular facets at the lugs and a 6.5 millimeter screw down crown with the absence of crown guards. Between the screw down crown and the exhibition case back, this model is rated to an impressive spec of 300 meters of water resistance, not curtailing performance despite the reduction in size. Along with the dimensions, the style of finishing also contrasts sharply with our previous example, with the bathyscaph defined by a brush finish that makes this watch feel more subdued, apart from a heavy facet casting along the side of the lugs. Now digging into one of the best aspects about this watch is the slimmer build, and that comes also with the bezel. This one is provided with a 120 click design that yields solid action, yet not quite as premium as the previous 45 millimeter 
meter 50 fathoms. This bezel setup is coupled with a more vintage style flat ceramic insert with liquid metal markings. Rather than being completely loomed, only the pearl index at 12 offers luminescent material. Yet getting back to the points of similarity between these two models is the strap. Here located between the angular 20 millimeter lugs and constructed from the same Kevlar and rubber combination, providing a comfortable and water resistant wearing experience while tapering to a similar style 18 millimeter buckle. Furthering the separation of design, the bathyscaphe has an entirely different layout and markings available for easy viewing beneath its dome sapphire crystal. Set over a sunray slate gray central surface, the indices on the bathyscaphe are much smaller with tiny applied circular markers paired with stylized trapezoidal indices at 12, three, six, and nine, each complete with a very small helping of luminescent material. Adding a bit of three dimensionality, the Dallas periphery, which is imprinted with a simple linear mini track, slopes away from the center, creating a dome form that offers more touches of reflection underneath the light. At the center, a polished syringe style handset tracks the time of day with the help of the lollipop second hand, again, treated with a red tip. Text is again sparse with only the brand's logo at noon, 50 fathoms just below as the model is theoretically still a part of that collection. And then Bathyscap at six in blocky vintage text and the same 430 position of the date. As a note, the loom here is still more than capable, but it does fall behind the previously shown model with that larger 50 fathoms, in part due to the much smaller real estate it occupies in this more diminutive design. Now turning the Bathyscap over, we have one of the more welcome points of differentiation here with this model offering offering a Sapphire exhibition case back that allows view of the caliber 1150. Now this caliber is known for its slimmer profile at only 3.25 millimeters in thickness, consistently finding itself within Blanc Pond's smaller case bathyscap in Villaray models. It contains free sprung balance architecture, a silicon balance spring, and dual barrel design in this instance, allowing for an extended 100 hour power reserve, though it is operating at a lower beat frequency of three hertz, as opposed to the faster four hertz seen with the 1315. Since it's on display, let's speak about the finishing. The 1150 showcases Geneva striping across the central bridges, chamfered edges to those bridges, polished screw heads, and a matte finished 18 karat gold rotor, showcasing a mix of blasting, brushing, and graining to achieve its final presentation. In terms of accuracy, the 1150 is also adjusted at six positions, which you'll see on the movement as well. And then when testing across five positions, we had plus one to plus four seconds a day across those positions. This one again, operating at 21,600 vibrations per hour, three hertz. This is actually a non-hacking movement, so another point of differentiation from the previous version, and some people might have an issue with. It is a hand winding movement, and it has a power reserve of 100 hours. So now with the reviewing out of the way, I want to talk a bit more about uh, Blanc Pond, the 50 Fathoms, and the Bathyscaphe. Which is the better one to go for? And ultimately, let's just talk about the 50 Fathoms in general. Now, I believe that the 50 Fathoms, when you're talking about legendary dive watches, does not necessarily get the love that it deserves. People are very quick to bring up the Submariner and it gets pretty much all the love. It's become this hyped up model. But if you're talking about what really leads the way in terms of setting the tone for what we know a dive watch to be, Blanc Pont really takes ownership over many of these different characteristics. When it comes to the defining elements of a unidirectional bezel, talking about the loomed elements, orientation and markings on the bezel itself, this brand simply just deserves a ton of respect when it comes to its history and pedigree in the world of diving, which I think many people are quick to know. But many people probably are not quick to maybe fully invest their dollar amount into appreciating it. And I have to ask the question, why is that the case? Now, I think these are the two pillars of when you're looking at this brand, where are the conventional ways to start? Now, there are plenty of different models and somewhat it, it is kind of overwhelming uh, to get lost in the different variations with the very subtle differences that are taking place. I would say for, of course, what we talked about, what was the original positioning of these watches? You look at the 50 Fathoms and its larger case format being more of a true dive watch for utility. Then you have the Bathyscaphe, which has the dive watch utility, but more geared towards the everyday wear side of things. And I believe even looking at these watches in a contemporary form, they still remain true to that original positioning. That said, I do feel that there are some opportunities for Blanc Pond to develop a bit more of an ownership in the price segment that they occupy. The Bathyscaphe to me is a great watch for smaller wristed individuals. It's going to be really down to the basics of utility dive watches, not really having that luxury flair of some other just cases out there. It's really down to the business, which I really appreciate. And there's some cool variations that have been released. And I think 38 millimeters is a tad small for my wrist, but there are other variations that of course you can find. 
But I think with the 50 Fathoms, the original design formula that the uh, watch is, of course, paying reverence to here is something that they could definitely expand on. They've done some limited edition models. You've seen like the Barracuda versions. You've seen also some different moisture indicator dials that they've done at a limited uh, supply at 40 millimeters, which to me would allow, I feel, more consumers who are, let's be frank, looking at the Submariner and then looking at something like Bang Pan and just want something of similar wearability this would, I think, allow more people to look in the direction of the brand. I think one thing that people are going for is price, but at the end of the day, I think they really are also looking for something that's going to wear to their liking. Now, you don't want to compromise where you come from, your history, and your dimension set that really made this become a legend in the first place. However, I do think that there are instances where you can really capitalize on the opportunity, and I would think that with some very calculated positioning of some of their sizing and other new releases from uh, the brand, I think they could really start capitalizing on what potentially could be in front of them uh, to maybe pull buyers away from people that are in that segment of the Submariner looking at that watch and then starting to look at this watch instead. Because one thing that people can't dispute, no matter if you like this design, you don't like this design, the 50 Fathoms is a legend and it's a hard watch to beat from a dive watch pedigree standpoint. But all right guys, that is my take on the Bathyscaphe and the 50 Fathoms looking at uh, more of their backstory and comparing these two models. Have you ever considered buying one of these watches? Do you own one of these watches? Uh, what allowed you to maybe pull the trigger or not pull the trigger? I'd love to see comments down below. Also, if you enjoyed this video and uh, covering these watches, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. That really does help as well. Be sure to also check out for further context on these watches and appreciation of them. I recommend checking out that blog in the description down below. It's a really in-depth article uh, trying to get into more of the details of their backstory because that's a huge part and component uh, of the story here that I wasn't able to get into the fullest degree. Also, be sure to check out teddybaldasar.com, full authorized dealer of 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, full factory warranty for all the products that we offer. And of course, if you want to stay up to date with the content, subscribe to our newsletter and be sure to follow along on Instagram to see some great photos of watches in the process. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.